Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com. Let's talk about windows. How do I deal with this window? Maybe you've got a window behind your speakers, maybe on your right or your left, maybe behind you, and you're wondering, is this causing problems? The short answer is, you probably don't have to worry about it more than any regular piece of drywall. Let me show you why. So in practice, glass and drywall actually have very similar absorption coefficients. If we look at this graph here, this is a graph showing the absorption coefficient over a bandwidth from 125 hertz to 4 kilohertz. On the left is the actual coefficient, which goes from 0 to 0.8 in this particular graph, but it usually goes from 0 to 1, so from no absorption to 100% absorption. This first yellow line here is a 4 millimeter single pane of glass. And it's got an absorption coefficient of about 0.3 at 125 hertz, going down to about 0.1 at 500 hertz, and close to zero at 4 kilohertz. Now let me show you a single layer of drywall plasterboard on a standard 2x4 studded wall. That's this blue line. And it actually has an absorption coefficient of 0.3 at 125 hertz as well goes down to about just under 0 0.1 at 500 hertz and then stays at that 0 0.1 up to about 4 kilohertz. So a single pane of 4 millimeter glass has a very similar absorption coefficient to a single layer of drywall. It's a little bit higher in the lows and it kind of goes down towards almost no absorption in the highs. What about double glazed windows though? So that's this green line. And as you can tell, it actually absorbs less sound. So less sound passes through it at lower frequencies. If you compare that with a double layer of plasterboard drywall, again on a standard two by four studded wall, that's this red line. And once again, we see it starts at about 15% absorption at 125 Hertz and then goes down to just under 0.1 at 4 kilohertz. So glass and drywall actually behave very similarly. They reflect maybe 90% of the energy striking it, and they let pass or absorb slightly more low-end energy than high-end energy. You might say, okay, but the reflection off of glass sounds different than the reflection off of drywall. And that's true. Reflections off of glass don't sound particularly good, but reflections off of drywall don't sound particularly good either. So you're not really winning or losing much. Now, the fact that both materials absorb a little more bass tells us a little something about how they behave when sound strikes them. Basically, they're a heavy membrane and any membrane will have some resonant frequency at which it actually lets sound pass through. In this particular case, because of the weight of the material, it's quite low. And at that frequency, it behaves like a filter. It's like an EQ. And just like you may have seen with EQs that have a particular phase response, a wall or a glass will also affect the timing of the reflected energy. Basically, it screws up the timing of the energy that it does reflect. So this is why rooms often have different acoustic dimensions to the actual visual dimensions that you see. And that in turn means that a lot of the assumptions like the 38% guideline or calculations that you do with a room mode calculator can get pretty inaccurate if you have a room with lots of drywall and windows and doors and whatnot. So that's why I always recommend that you need to test the room. You need to work with what's actually there so that you can figure out what's going on and work with the room. And I've provided a link in the description to show you what that can look like. But coming back to our window, in practice, that means that you can treat any window like any piece of drywall. If you identify a reflection point on the window surface that you need to treat, then you would treat it just like you would a reflection point on a drywall. It becomes more a question of practicality, like how are you going to mount an absorber on the window? How are you going to make sure it stays in place? Now, what does get mentioned often is to use a really heavy curtain to 
absorb that reflection off of the window surface. And it, it's true that that works, but in my opinion, that's not a good idea. Let me show you why. So here, this purple line is the absorption coefficient of a fairly heavy curtain, a typical acoustic curtain draped in folds with about four inches of space behind it to the window. So as you can tell, it's got about the same absorption coefficient, about 0.3 at 125 hertz, but the absorption increases a whole lot as you go up to four kilohertz. So a heavy curtain actually behaves somewhat like a thin absorber panel. The problem with that is that you're potentially putting a huge thin absorber in your room. And if you've seen my video called, Can I Have Too Much Absorption? you know that I highly discourage using thin absorbers in your room. Again, I'll put a link to the video in the description. So if you want to put up curtains for aesthetic reasons, you're far better off actually using a very thin curtain. If you look here, this blue line, this light blue line, is a thin curtain just hung straight in front of the window. And as you can tell, its absorption coefficient in the low frequencies is basically negligible. It does also absorb high frequencies, but it's nowhere close to the absorption coefficient of a heavy curtain. And if you're going to put up a curtain, I think it's a far better compromise. So as you can tell, you don't need to treat a window any different than a stretch of drywall in your room. It basically behaves the same. How you treat it is just a matter of practicality. That's really where the big difference is. And if you properly test your room for low end balance, you'll inherently also include the effect any window has on your acoustics or your room response. Finally, if you're experiencing a fairly dead room and you've, you've got a pretty big thick curtain somewhere, this is the reason why your room probably sounds so dead. So as an alternative, maybe you should think about just treating the particular reflection point that you want to treat locally with some deep absorber and then using a thin curtain for the rest of the window instead. And you can put that behind or in front of the absorber. It doesn't really matter. So do you have a window that you've been unsure about what to do with in your studio? Let me know in the comments below. As usual, if you want to know more about the acoustics of your home studio and you want to find out how you can better work with your room, how you can really get the most out of your room and your speakers, make sure to come and find me at AcousticsInsider.com. Subscribe to my channel if you like this video. See you soon.